Hi, my name is Jennifer Holloway, and I want to share with you guys a short presentation about a book that I've recently read that changed my life. You know, all my life I felt that it's harder for me to make friends than it is for others. Um, some people can just instantly go up to complete strangers and carry on a conversation that lasts for hours, and some people can get offered a promotion after being with the company for only a short amount of time while I personally strive to improve the boss or strive to try to get people to like me. And I never really was able to just focus on how I was treating others or what impression I was making. And so then I found the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, written by Dale Carnegie. And this book has given me a new way of thinking, of reacting and interacting with others. So I'd like to share with you some of my favorite points of this book. And in this book, there are several principles that Carnegie suggests as a guide to winning friends and influencing people. The first principle that I've chosen is to share with you and discuss is don't criticize, condemn, or complain. In this chapter of the book, Carnegie writes of a story about a boy and his father. And in the story, the father slips into his son's room filled with remorse. You know, his son's lying there sleeping, and the father's describing his feelings of guilt. Guilt of condemning his son that day for several things, from the way he dabbed his face with a towel to the way he stood saying, goodbye, daddy. The father had a sickening feeling later that night when the son timidly came to the father's office and threw his tiny little arms around his father's neck with so much love and appreciation. And the father had fallen into this habit of finding guilt. You know, the father did love his son, but had been measuring his son by yardstick of his own years, and thus not allowing the boy to be a boy, expecting too much out of him. This father had experienced that he had been criticizing, condemning, and complaining at his son that he was not helping his son by doing so. And that night, the father made a vow to his son as he lied sleeping in, in his bed that he was going to be a real daddy and enjoy the things his son enjoys and to bite his tongue when impatient words came about. So Carnegie writes, and I quote, Instead of condemning people, let's try to understand them. Let's try to figure out why they do what they do. That's a lot more profitable and intriguing than criticism. And it breeds sympathy, tolerance, and kindness. God himself doesn't judge people. Why should you or I? And I learned how I can apply this concept to my life, especially when it comes to my children. You know, after reading the story of this boy and his father, I realized how, you know, when I was small, I felt when my parents expected too much out of me. And then in turn, I realized how I do the same thing to my kids. So, you know, I challenge you to try to point out the good things and show how much we appreciate others rather than wounding others' pride. So let's move on to the next principle that I really benefit from in this book. You give honest and sincere appreciation. The biggest thing that stood out to me in this chapter is that humans have a natural desire to feel important. Don't you think it's it just feels good whenever you are needed at work or you have an important task to complete that only you can do? And I know I do when I'm asked to fulfill a task at my place of employment because, because I'm perfect for that job. It makes me feel needed. It makes me feel important which instills in me a desire to do my very best and to be dependable and loyal. And Carnegie states that where a person gets their sense of importance makes their character. I'd like to share a story with you that I enjoyed reading about in this chapter of the book. Carnegie was getting insight from a doctor at a psychiatric hospital who shared about one of his patients. <laughs> Her marriage proved to be a tragedy. This woman wanted love, children, sexual gratification, and social prestige and her husband didn't love her. In fact, he refused to even eat a meal with her. No children, no social standing, the woman went insane. She imagined that she divorced her husband and married into English aristocracy. And instead of being, and insisted on being called Lady Smith, she began dreaming up that each night she had a new child. The doctor did not see her insanity as a tragedy. He stated that, and I quote, if I could stretch out my hand and restore her sanity, I wouldn't do it. She's much happier as she is. And if some people are so hungry for a feeling of importance that they actually go insane to get it, imagine what miracle you and I can do and achieve by giving people honest appreciation this side of sanity. And another great principle to apply to our way of interacting with people is arousing the other person an eager want. There once was a little boy whose father was worried about him. The boy was underweight and he refused to eat properly. You know, the parents used the usual nagging method. They would say, mother wants you to eat this or father wants you to grow up to be a big man and the boy paid no attention to these please you know how could you expect a three-year-old boy to react to the viewpoint of a 30-year-old man finally the father realized how absurd it was to expect the boy to see things the way the parents saw them then the father 
thought to himself, how can I tie up what I want with what he wants? And it was simple to figure out once the father thought of it that way. He would arouse the boy to an eager want. And see, this boy had a trike that he absolutely loved to bride. Well, there was a bully in the neighborhood who was a bigger boy than him, and he would push the boy off the trike and then ride it himself, and the boy would naturally go running to his mother crying. So what did the boy want? He wanted his pride, his anger, his desire for a feeling of importance. So the father explained to the boy how if he would eat the food that mother asked him to eat, that he would grow bigger and he would be able to stand up to the bully and, and, and the boy loved that idea. So the mor moral of the story is to talk about what people want and show them how to get it. The father talked about what the boy wanted and showed him how to get it. You want to keep the bully from taking your bike, you eat your food and you grow bigger. So out of this book, I just hope that this will help some of you to, the way it has me with how I react and interact with others. I honestly feel that I gained so much out of this book, and if anything, I encourage you to read it. Thanks for listening.